back to my channel. Listen, y'all, so let's get right on into it. So last night when I watched Carlton Pearson's Live and Vanessa Brooks, um, it was the most invigorating video that I've seen in a long time because I've been following Carlton Pearson now for maybe like seven years and actually, hi, Vanessa, hi, Vanessa. I saw you, Vanessa, in his uh, comment section on one of his videos that he was doing. And um, so I don't know, I just took a special interest. I, I guess obviously I like the comment that you made. And then I um, followed you on, on Facebook and when I went over and saw your content and I was like, okay, I, okay, I can rock with Vanessa. Um, I listened to your story, your background. You said you were a pastor at one point in time. I was too. And of course we know Carlton Pearson's uh, history, which is uh, vast. 50 years of uh, ministry and then um, and then he kind of evolved into expanded consciousness because he was such a Bible studier and also he obviously had an empathetic heart so the idea what was so interesting about the live last night uh, Vanessa the subject of hell so I've been watching you also on TikTok and um, and I come into your TikTok and you, you've seen me. You say, hey, Cheryl. And I was like, hi, Vanessa. And I'll be listening to you uh, talk and ask, uh, answer questions and sometimes ask questions and uh, create those uh, bulletproof boundaries where when people need to be got all the way together, you be there to get them together. And which I love all of that. And so last night, Vanessa, seeing you, on Carlton Pearson's live, I was so proud of you. I was, and last night you said that you had gotten up to 17,000 um, uh, followers on TikTok, and congratulations for that, you know? So you're doing big things, and I just, I can't imagine how you feel today being honored um, by um, being on Carlton Pearson's live. You know what I mean? Carlton Pearson? You know what I'm saying? That that uh, it gets no better than that. And last night just just um listening to you talk and, and tell your experience of how when you were a pastor, the things that you did not the things that you questioned that were in the Bible. Um one thing you said in particular was I think you talked about John three and sixteen and you talked about you ask God the question about why did his son have to die? And why was there, you know, why was his life, why did he have to die? You know, could God have done it another way? And then that question led to another question and then another question. And ultimately you came to the conclusion that that God of the Bible wasn't the God that you had become to know. There was one super interesting thing about your live last night, um, Vanessa, is when you talked about you had a conversation with Jesus. And you said that you told Jesus that, uh, that, I'm, that you were not going to read the Bible for one year. So you took a break from your theology. And that reminded me a lot of my um, my story. And I told my daughter today, I said, you know, when Vanessa said that last night, it took me back to a time when I made a conscious decision, like this decision was super conscious. So like when you said, you said, come here, Jesus, let me talk to you. You had that conversation. I did the same thing. And basically I told God, you know, I didn't say come here, Jesus, but <laughs> I told God, I said, listen, Everything that I've learned from this point, everything, everything that I've learned from the church, everything that I've studied, everything that I was a part of, and everything that I have observed, I'm going to turn away from it. Because the place that I landed in my life and all the things that I, I had observed, the things that I believed versus the things that I was experiencing, were two different things. So then I was like, you know, something is not right. So I turned my back on that system 
not knowing where I was going, not knowing what was going to come. And I remember Vanessa and, um, and I'm asking you this question. Were you super afraid? Because I remember I was scared. I was scared to death, but I had a courage inside of me. You know, a, this is, this is not, I didn't slip. And I've told people this before. People say, oh, well, you backslid. No, uh -uh. no, I did not backslide. I made a conscious decision that this thing, the Pentecostal church and the Jesus and everything that I had learned and everything that I had studied, because I did a great job at studying to show myself approved unto God. You know, the word, the Jesus, the preaching of the pulpit and me studying, all of it was what I thought you needed to do that's what was told me to live this wonderful new life that i had as a, a believer and a born again christian spirit filled speaking in tongues and holy ghost filled and all um yeah those were the things that i did and those were the things that i turned my back on momentarily because my thing was at the time momentarily but i remember vanessa being so afraid but i had courage and when i was watching you last night on carlton pearson's show and when i watch you on facebook and when i watch you on TikTok, that's what stands out the most about you vanessa you are super courageous and um obviously carlton is too and i am too so people ask me um what's similar uh, in all of our lives is having relationships with people who are fundamentalists and who super believe, you know, all the teachings of the Bible, the indoctrinated mind. I know I had it. Vanessa, of course you had it. And certainly Carlson Pearson had it. The, they are still that way. And, and some have asked me questions. It was like, Cheryl, when are you going to come back? And I was like, come back where? <laughs> because once you face that that fear, the fear of the hell and the separation from God, once you face that, once you face that, like a lot of people never like look that straight in the face. But I remember I had courage, super courage. So did you, Vanessa and Carlton, to look that thing in the face and say, no, 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 that's not it. I don't want that and I'm not afraid. And I remember back then with me, uh, Vanessa, I said that even if hell was a possibility, then I would deal with the consequences. I would face that. As long as I could trash this system and see what's on the other side. You know what I'm saying? It was important to me. And so I am so happy that I did that and like Vanessa you said last night you were like you told Carlton you was like like I'm so happy now because of the love and the freedom that you have and that you experience knowing that the creator some people say the universe or whatever you say is not looking down at you like you old dirty nasty thing and that you need this Jesus and the indoctrination to make you clean and you're never safe and secure with God because you're still going to be judged in the end and, and all of that stuff. And it's terrible. But on this lane <laughs> or this place that we've all come to is a beautiful place. And I just want to say again, Vanessa, congratulations. It was astonishing to watch you guys last night. And I'm super proud of you. I'm super proud of you because you faced your fears. You got on the other side of fear. So did Carlton. And I am very much that way too because God is not that way. And I understand that the writer said that God is, you know, this vindictive, jealous, you know, they say that he's a just God. But then when you read the story and see how he carries certain things out, like the murder of, you know, women and children and, and how he tells them to go over there and possess the land and when you get over there kill those people because those people are bad it's almost like this group of people is good and that group of people is bad and it's just a bunch of man and man's ways and man's ideas that they have pinned on god but anyway congratulations vanessa's kisses and hugs and i'll see y'all the next time bye